Hey, I'm Stimming. Welcome to another episode of How I Play for DJ Tech Tools. In this video I show you the home setup, the actual home setup, which is connected to how I'm going to play on stage later on in the year. I want to show you a little bit of this setup and then we go into my studio later on to see what I do with it. So what I'm going to show you is, let's say, a combination of different devices that grow on me just like a real instrument because I just found the right combination. It's the black box the blue box connected with a little controller from Intech Studios from Hungary, the reverb, my instant mastering chain that takes care, everything sounds quite good in the moment where it comes out, where I can record it, the OCS2 from France, I think it's sold out and it's a weird little virtual analog synth but I really love how it sounds, and the Tasty Chips GR1, of course there's a keyboard. What I'm going to show you is a remix that I made from Bonfant, Bonfante, Cowboys Like Unicorns 2. I love granular so much. I made it on this setup and the amazing thing is once I found that as an, as an instrument it's fast on the one hand side but the energy is very very higher than I used to do in the studio where I design everything and it's all very detailed and stuff and when it's about club music I figured um, the simpler the better. So I record any, everything through the Sonosax in here. I also record on the blue box. And so it's a little bit of editing afterwards, but the core of the track is made very efficient in here. But getting to a setup as efficient as this took me a lot of thoughts. Over here, I got all the portable instruments that I used to use. And for example, if I would a Machine Plus in here over the empty space, Immediately everything would be way too complicated. I wouldn't have any clue what's happening on the machine while I'm also organizing something over here. So for a working hardware only setup, it's important to find the balance between complexity and simplicity. So you still as a single user are still able, your brain is still able to follow what you're actually doing. I'm gonna play a little bit more and then we um, meet each other again in the studio and then I show you how I work over there and what I did with the track afterwards.
And just for fun, let me just quickly switch off my mastering chain to get an idea of what happens. Peak minus two, it's five dB, but it's a lot thicker, isn't it? Welcome back. Now we're in my studio and this is where I spend the most of my day. Let me plug in my mastering chain because I can carry it around. And then I'm going to show you what gear I use exactly and how I edited the recording I did at home to make it a final track. The studio space is where I very much go into detail and where I design music just the way I'm known for. But at home I do like the fun stuff, which is a bit faster, a bit rougher, but different energy level kind of. So what am I working with? The designing room, the music design room here is based around Bitwig on a touchscreen, um, merging Harpy audio over IP um, audio interface. So it's just one network cable which is connected and can transmit a lot of channels and it's the IP protocol. So it works freaking good. I don't need to leave the sweet spot because for example, if I go the, the makeup gain on the 2500, I just touch it and then I stay in a sweet spot and I tweak it and I see what actually happens. And of course I need to look at the levels because that's the most important thing. So what do I have? It's all based around the touchscreen, right? Still the Wacom 13, Cintiq 13, old school, but it works still very sufficient. Mm, the pen is pretty much a mouse input. So for everything detailed, the pen actually works. Secondly, most important, the keyboard, which is a C15 from Nonlinear Labs and a freaking good synthesizer and a very, very good keyboard. It's just pure luxury and I love it for that. And it's also always nice to have a very, very interesting sounding digital synth at your fingertips. I control it with a browser. So controlling the synth is done in here on the touchscreen because there's no space for the additional programmer up here, but it's also, especially if you have those many presets or sounds, it's, um, it's good to use a touchscreen for that. You see, here's quite an empty space. I mostly use it for bring stuff over here and then get rid of it again, because it's not confusing me. I just, for example, I have the Wild of M, I'll show you later, and I just record it. I put it away so I can focus on what's really important. And this happens in the touchscreen and over here as the gear, which helps me to save time, because if I send something through here, it usually comes out better in an instance. So that's what hardware is made for. The audio tweaking hardware, it's for saving time. Audio interface merging Harpy, uh, Precast M7 Reverb, um, the API 2500. I have it since 10 years and I'm gonna have it for the next 10 years. The Dynex 2, which unfortunately needs to leave because I'm not using it that often. Two very nice EQs that are before the API. Um, the prototype of my instant mastering chain, that's the circuit which you can buy later on. And that's the first prototype. That's a controller for my speakers, the key audio, very expensive, very good sounding speakers. The final unit, two preamps from the same manufacturer that sound incredibly nice. Very fast PC. Yeah, I'm a PC guy and yeah, the synth part, the tone creating part. Here I got the Maleko Heavy Industries. I love that name, the Manta. Just a very pure monophonic advanced 303, but in, uh, with the SEM chip, so it's... is really really nice uh, i don't like the upper the upper tones from it and it's a bit slow and the sequencer is uh, weird to program but the sound itself i really like it so that's actual audio right fed right into the sequencer and um, listen to the and, and put some plugins digital plugins on it that's how i work okay let's go over to the next all right now i show you the the toys the instruments which I usually hide because 
I just get them out when I need them. Otherwise, I just have them in a, in a case back here to not get distracted. For me, I recognize that the more knobs and possibilities that are in, in front of my eyes, I get distracted and I cannot really focus. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. Still, of course, I have a lot of possibilities that I'm going to show you. This is my U87 microphone. At one point, I was like, okay, I need a really good microphone where I can do some choirs by myself. And you can do this because it sounds exactly how we think a voice should sound, probably because everyone's using it. But it's very expensive. And that was the, the, the biggest uh, expense for me last year. So it's quite new. Let's come over here into my case as I was traveling a lot. I have a weakness for flight cases and Peli cases. I somehow find them sexy, which is a bit weird, I admit. But um, what is inside is the actual sexy part. Digitone, Digitact, of course. The Zen Delay, the Sonic Potions LXR2 together with Erica Synth. The Synth Pro, yes, I still have it. It's just so special, somewhat. OP1, of course, the Tanzbear, which will never leave. Over here, the Tanzbear. Down here, what do we have? My, my very first drum machine, the very first hardware I ever bought, the ER1. I learned so much from it because the synthesis is so simple but effective. There should be a modern classic review out there as well when you see that video or soon. Analog rhythm, does it still smell? <laughs> No, it's okay. It be, it, it, it's neutral again. Oh, it's dirty. And it travels so much with me. You see those, those marks over here? It really got, got hit quite a bit. The Octatrack. Use deck savers, kiddies. <clears throat> um, controller for the very, very good sounding um, Repro 1 and 5. Then something which you can hear on my record with Lambert, Stimming X Lambert, um, the ATV A-Frame. So it's a percussion synthesizer which reacts very, very precisely on how you play it. Unfortunately, it's weird to program because you do it over here. It's, it's made to, to be programmed blindly, but it's nice. I really like to use it. Here. The wild off. <laughs> yeah. It just sounds like it looks luxurious. And I hold them both. How do you like that? Huh? How do you like that? <laughs> but you see, as if there's a flooding, which can happen in Hamburg. Um, those two are safe. I once in Ibiza, I threw this exact case inside the pool with a mini brood in it. It survived, no problem. And then I have an oddity. It's the first real Chinese instrument. And I don't mean made in China, it's also designed in China. The Wing Pinger, two analog filter which can frequency modulate each other and a random step sequencer that's a creature of its own it really is a creature of its own the first real chinese instrument i'm looking forward to hear more um, from a totally different culture with a totally different sound everyone who is into my music knows how much i love handmade stuff in it and organic sounding and i need shakers This one, this one. And of course the sleigh bells. Sleigh bells in the snow. And I also got plenty of like small shakers. Very mild sounding shakers. Very important chewing gum. It's so useful. 
You hear that? It's very useful, isn't it? And then I record it and just cut like half a bar out of it. But the perfect one, the one that really f values the, uh, the beat. And the piano. The piano I grew up on. I think my parents bought it when I was seven or eight years. Near Frankfurt, where I grew up. I don't know what to play. Okay, so that, that was one round, and if the camera looks to the front, you see that it's just um, everything I have. And I think that's quite a lot. I'm very thankful for what I have. Um, I promised you to show how I treated the audio I did at the, the home office. Yeah, so I, I took the main out from my instant mastering chain, plus the individual recorded ones from the blue box, and I put it into Bitwig. I put everything into Bitwig over here. And if you look at the arrangement, you see that audio one is the, the main out um, through my chain and the other ones are the, the buses. And it's practically not that much that I really needed to edit. So the beginning I was very happy, but only in the break, I really needed to kind of shorten it and I added another track for the... Yeah. I, ju I think I doubled the glitch from the GR1 to make it a bit more present. And we just listened to the drop for Bonfant uh, Cowboys Like Unicorns 2, my remix for her. Um, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the music. Mm -hmm.